Hi, Mr. Spohn here, and today we're going to look at the periodic table, and we're basically going to learn what these letters, numbers, and symbols on the boxes on the periodic table mean. So if we had water, the smallest amount of water that you could possibly have would be one molecule of water, and a molecule consists of individual atoms in fixed proportion. So this would be one unit of water, one molecule of water, of H2O. And water is made up of individual atoms. There are two hydrogen and one oxygen atoms in water. And we find hydrogen and oxygen on the periodic table. They are elements. And the smallest unit of an element that is possible is one atom. So while the smallest unit of water possible is one molecule of water, because water is a combination of atoms, the smallest unit of any element possible is going to be one atom of something. So we're going to look at the periodic table. Uh, here's a periodic table that I actually made and we see a whole bunch of elements, all the elements that we know of. And I think this one's going up to 118 right now. Some of these are experimental, sort of just being discovered, verified. But uh, if we look at this box, we see a number, an atomic number, we see an element symbol, the name of the element and the element's atomic mass. So let's kind of see what these mean. Uh, we again have atomic number, symbol, element, and mass. Notice the symbol, uh, NA, it's always going to be a capital letter followed by a, a letter that is not capitalized, the lowercase letter. Now you could have single elements like hydrogen is just one, but if you do have an element with a two letter abbreviation, the second letter must be lowercase, first letter uppercase. So the atomic number, uh, sometimes called Z, is the total number of protons in an atom. So this number right here on the periodic table always represents the proton number. Atoms can lose or gain electrons and they can even have different numbers of neutrons, but the proton number must always be the same. Sodium will always have 11 protons. It cannot have a num it cannot have 10, it cannot have 12, it cannot have any number, a different number of protons. It could have 10, 11, 12 electrons. It could have different numbers of neutrons, um, but it can never have more or less than 11 protons. This kind of first number here is the defining characteristic of sodium. It's defined as 11 protons. And the atomic mass down here is a weighted average of all the different types of sodium that we find. Um, it represents the total number of protons and neutrons. So there's 11 protons in sodium and about 23 protons and neutrons combined, which means 23 minus 11, there should be roughly 12 neutrons in sodium. And we'll talk about that in a second. And again, the, uh, cross that out, the atomic number is the number of protons in any element or atom. It is also the number of electrons, if neutral, and we are gonna start with mainly neutral atoms for now. It's the number of protons and the number of electrons. And this atomic mass is the number of protons and neutrons combined. And we're going to round this number for now. We would make this number 23. So let's just do an example. Um, again, we have sodium. So how many protons? Well, number of protons is the atomic number. So we have 11 protons. Uh, the number of electrons is the atomic number of neutral. And we're going to assume all the atoms we're working with today are neutral, 11. And number of neutrons is the atomic mass, rounded. So that rounds to 23 minus the atomic number, minus 11, the atomic number, bottom minus the top. So there will be 12 neutrons. And that's pretty much all we got to do if we're looking to determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So we have a different one here. We now have carbon, and again, the number of protons is the atomic number, six. The number of electrons, if neutral, we're assuming it's neutral, is also the atomic number, six. And we're going to round this number to get the uh, neutron number. It's the bottom minus the top, or the atomic mass, which is 12 rounded, minus six, which is the atomic number, equals six, 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 six. And now we'll do oxygen. And it's the same deal. Number of protons is the atomic number, eight. 
Uh, it's also the electron number. Remember, this is neutral. We're working with all neutral atoms. So the proton number and the electron number are the same right now. The neutron number, we're simply just going to round the bottom number, 16. The atomic mass minus the atomic number, which is 8. And again, we got 8. These numbers aren't always the same, as we saw. But uh, we'll do one last one. We have gold here. Uh, gold has an atomic number of 79. That means every gold atom must have 79 protons in its nucleus. And if gold is neutral, if it's neutral, that is also the electron number. And this one's a bit bigger, but we're going to do the same thing for the neutron number. We take the atomic mass, 196.967. We round that to the nearest whole number, 197. We subtract the 79 from it, which is the atomic number. And that should give us uh, 118, 118 neutrons. You can double check my math. So this is how we read periodic table boxes. We have atomic number, proton number, and electron number of neutral. And this number down here represents the total number of protons and neutrons. And I hope that helps you. This is Mr. Zappone.